this is what today is going to be. Seems like a simple job, right? Just nine bolts, put the other one on. Hopefully it all goes smoothly. So we got two new sprockets for the skid steer. This is what attaches to the final drive. And there's nine bolts just uh, holding on this uh, 16 tooth sprocket, which pushes the tracks, which makes you go. Ugh, they're not light, they're like 50 pounds a piece. Um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, here's the part. Here's the part we're replacing this here. Um, I sprayed this off yesterday with a hose as best I can. I didn't feel like getting out the pressure washer, but today we're gonna to be replacing the sprocket. We're gonna be checking the oil in the idlers, the rollers, the front idler, rear idler, rollers, and the final drive. These are a 24 millimeter I checked yesterday. So here's the problem, let's see. Come here. Now I pop my tracks off all the time and just to show you guys, I've replaced these tracks and this is what you get when you work in the forest and rocks and, and everything else. It just rips the heck out of it. And it's a little, a little upsetting, but anyway. I don't know if I'd, I'd buy the same like big square tracks next time. I might get something different if I still have this machine then. We'll see. Okay, so we're gonna pop the grease out and let the track down so that we can, basically that's the first step, popping the track off. But if you could see, look at, look at the condition of this sprocket. So I got a tooth that's really messed up. There's a few of them that have chipped. So these two, so this one and this one are both chipped if you could see it from the front and then other concern is the spacing the the teeth themselves are pretty worn down this is too too much of a gap and you can definitely tell on the other side see over here a little easier to see probably all right yeah look at the there's just not much left there see how wide that is when we take it off I'll put it next to the other one on top of it and we can compare. I mean, that is just, that's why my track is popping off all the time. There's just way too much slack. So, all right, let's just get into it. Okay, so to take the track off, I'm gonna pick up the machine with the front bucket. I got the nice wide 60 inch uh, skeleton bucket on it and I'm gonna prop up what side I'm working on. I guess I'll work on the left side first. So I'm going to get something propped under here and get this uh, get this track off the ground so it can spin freely. So that's step number one. Hey girls, want to go for a run? Want to go for a run, Carmen? Maddie, run? Okay, you know that word. Okay, come on, it's getting willy. All right, I gotta go get a log. Guys, quick willy update. It's been great with this uh, this fuel pump here. The circular, uh, that's a vacuum pump versus the mechanical one. I just grabbed the suction off of the mechanical, plug the other side, boom, into there. It hasn't given me one single issue since I've changed it. So, uh, yeah, I'm not using a mechanical. Again, that's for sure. It's been going great. All right, let's start her up.
Now on this Cushman, I really like the throttle over here. It helps when you're using the hydraulic. There's a little handle right here. I don't know why this is here. I can put that there. But there's a little handle right here that you can throttle up when you're using the hydraulics. And then you can lift this and... Cool. I really hope it's good. Make it fit. Oh, that's perfect. Actually, one inch less would be perfect. You want to off center it when you're lifting up your track loader. Now, all you got to do is just curl the bucket down, extend the arms a little bit, and we'll be off the ground. But what you want to happen is that rear idler. That guy, you want that to be off the ground and the front will come off the ground. So you want this track to spin freely. a couple videos as far as inspecting the undercarriage on skid steers now you definitely want to pay attention to your sprocket that's the first thing you look at teeth you know all that stuff the, the gap how much is left here um, but you also want to inspect these rollers too these rollers should resist a little they should not spin freely if you kind of give it a flick if they spin freely it means your seals are gone and it's going to allow dirt in there and your bearings are really going to be shot in no time. So these are all pretty resistant, but they glide smoothly. <clears throat> these three feel about the same. This one feels a little tight, which means this one's probably the healthiest out of the other three. So, okay, really easy way of relieving the track here and getting it off is to just loosen the grease and then let the weight of the track sit and it's going to pull that front idler in and then we could just remove the track and i'm going to get that sprocket off let's loosen this plate it's a 13 in case you have this machine Oh, that's from that's from washing it out yesterday. Okay, got kind of wet in there. Right, we're gonna clean this up good when we're done. Got my greasy uh, socket. Nineteen. Now you should see this track start loosening up, and the oil or the grease start coming out. See the grease? And look at the track, it's just doing it on its own. And if you want to help it out, you could stand on the track too. Loosen this up a bit more. Stand on it. Yeah. Oh. Right, that's pretty loose. I'm just gonna leave I'm gonna leave that loose for now. That's all the grease. I hate wasting grease like that. It's like I just put it in there. Alright, now I'm just gonna get a pry bar and I'm going to put it between these teeth here, get it on the sprocket, and then pry it off. I need Meg in the in the uh, cab though to spin this track you can just spin one track if it's the left track you would go forward to the right or back to the left and it only spins one track so that's what we're gonna do 
my father-in-law showed up with this. Just an enormous pry bar. I use it all the time. Thanks, Papa. We call it the toothpick. The tooth? We do? Yeah, that's okay. what Jack called it. Meg calls it the toothpick. It's, it's a big bar. It's nice. All right, what do you want? Start it up. Do popped off the front idler first that was dopey you still got it off right yeah it's just it's still on the front idler though all right let me clear the stuff out of the way man these are in bad shape i'm not buying new ones i'm just saying they're in better shape than the ones that you got it with I know. all right let's What? JB Weld. JB Weld the rubber? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm just going to put a chain on it and get Ricky to move it out of the way a little bit so then I can work. Or maybe I'll just grab it with the backhoe. Alright, Ricky, let's get it. I think at this point we just have to unbolt the sprocket and uh, hopefully all those bolts loosen up okay. Oh yeah. God, I'm tempted to put this in like my small grease gun just for like stuff in the shop. That's a good cleaning once I'm done here.
got them all? I think I got them all. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, crap. Okay. Do you really need to be removed, too? I did not expect that. not that simple is it? I mean it must just be attached right there. All right I gotta go check the parts diagram here see if that comes apart the way that I think it does. Oh it couldn't just pop off huh? I don't want to take this off for the space because that's probably sealed and there's no leaks so Probably worth taking this off. Man, Come on, let's try to wiggle it off of there. No, you're not gonna wiggle that off there, John. Everything, I just looked at the parts manual. Everything's leading me to believe this whole thing is mounted on here through these bolts. There's two on the other side. Let's see if I could crack them loose. You know, I think sometimes it's worth the time to do it, do it with a wrench instead of that impact driver. I love that impact driver, but you can kind of feel what's going on with a regular wrench. All right, now I should probably crack the other side loose. Those are spinning nicely. These are going to be hard to get to. I don't know if I'll have room for the breaker bar. No way. I need an extension, pretty long one too. I might have one, might have one. That might work, dude. Fun key, yes. Wow. What the other one did. Yeah, wow. <sighs> okay, it's thread lock on there. It's lighter than the sprocket, not by much, but. Hopefully this will just 
Oh, thank you. Let's go get the new one. Now, here's the new one. And, I mean, when this arrived, I wasn't too, like... They're not the most expensive ones out there, so it's kind of like... You either overpay or you try to get a deal and not, you know, just forfeit a little quality. But this is going to be the outside. And there were just like little things like this, you know, it was obviously, I don't know, it looks like it was worked on after the casting was done. I don't know. I don't know. These things are just going to get really, they're going to be put through hell. Let's put it that way. So... It's heavy equipment as long as it's strong. I just didn't like to see this little pitting and stuff like that around from where they poured into this mold, but what are you gonna do? Um, all right, here's the original. Wow. You can really see the difference of how much that's amazing. Holy cow. Let me get you a better view. It's hard on camera, guys, but there is so much more meat right here and spacing. You can see the black here. So it leaves less wiggle room. Like, look, this one almost looks like a, like a shark fin almost. See what I mean? Where it's like really kind of nice and smooth here. It should be an angle flat and then the opposing angle on the other end like how that one is see everything's kind of like uniform and then those are just wow and i'm sure after some use all this black is going to get worn off on these but like look at this one here i'll line up the holes look at that one look at the difference that's insane the holes are lined up look look at the difference there that's that's what I'm trying to fix. So you got like that much more. That's insane. I know I keep saying the same thing. Like that's crazy. That's insane. So obviously this is the drive side since it's worn down so much. And the back side doesn't, you know, that's reverse. But you go forward more than you do reverse. Like that's not too worn. But the forward direction looks horrible. And I got chip. I got these two. These two. And those two, they're all chipped back to back. So six out of the 16 teeth on this sprocket are bad. And that's what I'm replacing it with. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a, if I got a good deal or what. These are about 240 a piece or so, something like that. I've seen them upwards of six, 800 a piece. I'm sure they're nicely polished and whatnot, but I mean, I think this will do the job. It's hard to believe that it's the same part, like how much is missing. there's like a more shallow side and there's a deep side like if you put your hands in here you could tell on the inside part it goes in a lot more here so just take note of the way the original one is it's not just the symmetrical sprocket but I mean I'll be honest I, I opened the box on these things and I saw some of this it just looks like some aesthetic 
Honestly, it looks like so, like there was a little bit of pitting or something like this when they casted this and they put some JB Weld over it. That's what it looks like to me. Hopefully it's not a mistake on my part that I accepted them. But I, you know, being realistic, these are the lesser expensive sprockets that you can buy. They're in a group of like, you know, third party aftermarket. And you get these from Takeuchi, they're gonna be over a grand each. And these were like 250 bucks a piece, so. We'll you get see. what you pay for. We will see, if it's a mistake, then it's my fault, I guess. But, but it certainly didn't look like the picture online. <laughs> so, buyer, I don't wanna say buyer beware, but just, you know. We're willing to take the risk for the difference in price. Ah, oh, sure. Especially since it's a personal machine, meaning this isn't doing an eight hour job every day in the field, you know? Yeah. All right, that's the one. I gotta go look up the torque and the uh, schedule here. Hold on. You didn't get the one at like four o'clock. There you go. I, not, I didn't know that that's how you figured out the. The torque specs. How do you figure them out? Uh, you, well, I knew the head diameter. The operator's manual tells you the head diameter of the bolt or the coarse thread measurement. You either know one or the other, and it'll tell you the proper torque specs. This one is a 24 millimeter head. I think it was a 16 millimeter thread diameter. Uh -huh. and and it tells you 156 foot pounds. Pretty okay. Cool. Let's see if I can even. No, for crying out loud. I, well, hopefully I can extend it. Let's see. Okay. Let's see if we get a click. All right. There's one. Let's go okay, up. keep track of which ones you've done. Yeah. I'm just going. <laughs> Torqued. Good job. Yeah, that's good. It's a nice thing to have, torque wrench. Okay. Now this guy. I gotta put him back on. I need your help as far as getting this started. Put this bolt in this hole. Okay. I need you to... Mm. I'm gonna lift it up. I gotta be right here. Oh. How's that? So you're draining the oil from the from the front idler, yeah. Why is there oil in the idler? Uh, I think there's ball bearings inside. Okay, that makes sense. Honestly, I expected worse. I expected this to be super thick and it's not. Not very much in it. No, there isn't. That could be the problem. While driving this thing, I always feel like, like this, it, it feels like it's in good shape. It feels like it's not, um, it doesn't spin totally, like I'm putting quite a bit of effort into spinning this thing. Like if I were to do it from the middle, like it feels good. It doesn't feel like anything's grinding in there. It feels like the seals are good. Um, so look, can you get a shot of this, Meg? Here's what it try. looks like. That's the plug. This is a, I think it's an M5. It's just a hex screw, which is a horrible thing, but it's just the plug. And you're gonna find that on the inside of your idler. And just drains as much as I could. I'm just gonna clean up after the fact here and uh, put in some new gear oil. So these take oil, not grease, obviously. It's not a grease fitting, it's a plug for oil. 
All right. I'm going to... Do you have a... Hmm? Where do you fill it? From the same place? Yeah, yeah. It's you weird. have a funnel no that air, small? There's no air displacement. Well, usually these um, gear oil things are so small they give you a spout on the oil can. Oh, that's smart. Just being that there's no grease in here, I could just... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Pull that out. Good thinking, John. There you go. All right, here we go. Ooh. We are full. Cool. That should make the bearings in there nice and happy. I think there's a shaft that goes through, and I think there's bearings on the drum inside, I think. I didn't put too much research into it, but I think there's bearings in here that need this oil badly. Yes, that is full. Okay. All right, can you go put yours on the next tube? Up here. Yep. Can you lift up on it? to get the big one and the next one. side all on now we're working on the other side and we just got the sprocket off John's comparing the two there you go that's lined up look at this one yeah that that's gonna that one. cause issue <laughs> that's crazy you, you can really see it from this angle let me see That's crazy. There's just so much material missing. Yeah. There you go. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Mm, that's a good overhead shot. Sorry. Here. Line up the bolts for you. Okay. Bolts are lined up, folks. Look at that. Look at how much material is missing. Look at that one. I guess when inspecting undercarriage parts on a skid steer, make sure these are symmetrical right here. If it looks like a, a wave of some kind, then you got issues because they should be symmetrical. Remember, this side of the tooth in this circumstance is driving forward, but it also in reverse switches it backwards. So this is this is an overhead shot that is completely lined up. That's how much material is missing from these sprockets. Yeah, it should like a, look like a gear from a clock or something. Not like this. Yeah. That's really... Overdue, I think. And I guess maybe another tip, if you're really serious about buying a skid steer or, or a heavy piece of equipment in that regard, and you have your mind set on one particular model, like say you wanted one like me, the Takeuchi TL-130, research replacement parts of common wear and tear things, like the sprockets, the undercarriage parts, the like bottom rollers, rear idler, front idler, I mean, the hydraulics, things Just like so that. you know what you're getting into. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, tracks yeah. are pretty standard, like 1,200 each. We got the second one on. Went pretty smoothly with the exception of uh, one bolt's threads getting kind of weird. We think they might have been like that the whole time, though. We are just trying to fix something that was already broken and not really fixable. But it's good now. Now we're just filling it back up with grease and... You should be ready to uh, sprocket away.
and about 60 pumps will be ready to go. <laughs> you learn something? I learn something every time I do something with you. I learned something too. What'd you learn? Yeah, just stuff. Stuff? Yeah, the gear oil and the idlers. I didn't know they had gear oil in there. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. It's not just the axle. There's bearings and all sorts of movable stuff in there. So, hopefully that helps somebody. Man, for how much, look at the oil pan over there. That's all the gear oil that came out of both front idlers. Not very much. And we put in most of that cord. Does it feel any different? The front idlers are really quiet. They're not squeaking at all. Go back and forth again. I feel like it has a quicker response. Yeah. I'll have to drive it around. Go forward and back again. Impressions feels good. I'm glad I got fresh oil and the idlers. That's good. Let's go see how they perform. How do the new sprockets feel? The new sprockets should have fallen off by now. Well, the old sprockets would have. That's what I'm trying well, to say. Well, the sprockets wouldn't fall off. You mean the tracks? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure about those torque specs. <laughs> um, yeah, in there, you can see my tracks right there. I was definitely like crooked driving around in there and pushing up against some logs and stuff. That definitely would have thrown them off. Yeah. That un uneven terrain right here. Something at least like a big pop or something. They're uh, they're holding them on really good now. Yeah. So far, so good then. So far, so great. Yeah, it's been good. That's good. Um, yeah. Goodbye then. A lot less headache. Yeah, we would have already had to replace or put them back on this morning. Please. Back up enough. Okay, here we go. <gasps> that scared me. Yeah, that was a rattlesnake. <laughs> you gonna fall? <laughs> I gotta pump it now. Pump, pump the jam, pump it up. All right, what? Now we get to carry it back. I should have just brought the hose over there. Quit laughing, jerk. Yeah? Uh huh. Well, you're ugly. Now you really told them, John. Yeah.